Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. Uh, with me today is Nathan Capister, host of a bunch of podcasts, Fair Point, Fair Enough, and Sylph Radio. And he's got a new YouTube channel as well. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, sure. I'd love to. I, I've done a bunch of YouTube videos, but they're all sort of just odds and ends here and there that I've experimented around with. It's uh, I love videos, but I, audio is my forte. So I'm stepping out of my comfort zone, though. And uh, I mean, I'm staying in it because I'm staying in Jurassic Park. I <laughs> started a, a, a brand new YouTube channel that's impossible to Google because it's called The Last Word, Jurassic Park. So it's just going to ask you if you meant The Lost World, Jurassic yeah. Park. Uh, it's a great name, but it's like the same thing with Amusement Sparks. If you type that into YouTube, it comes up, did you mean Amusement Parks? Like, you idiot, <laughs> you spelled this wrong. It's like, no, it's a clever name. Gosh darn it. <laughs> yeah, the last word. Guess me. Check for, <laughs> see if it's there first and then ask me. if I... That's what they should do. Yeah. But I mean, hey, eventually uh, we'll get to the point where, where the search engine will recognize us. And that's when we know we've arrived, when the... Uh, Searching specifically for our name spelled totally correctly, it comes up. That would be a yeah. dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was cool to see it happen with like Fairpoint Podcast and stuff because yeah. it wasn't at first. So that's really. But cool. um, yeah, the last word is is fun. I've only done one video so far to date. I just had a surgery that like it, it's nothing to be worried about minor surgery, but it threw off all the like big plans I like just started and have been trying to finish, but. Uh, I got one video up about Fallen Kingdom and more that I'm planning that are really fun. The, the one I've got up is sort of an off-the-cuff thing, but I've got some... I, I want to do more planned, you know, retrospectives and uh, more documentary-style video. I don't... Documentary-style, but you know what I mean, well-produced. Yes. Yeah. So are these going to be similar style to your regular, regular podcast, like Fair Point, Fair Enough, where it's kind of conversational, but it's still kind of progresses through like the the facts about the piece sure i mean when i'm not going to put a lot of pressure on myself to pin it down to any uh -huh. you know uh format or anything like that just whatever i love jurassic park and it's such a specific topic that you have to be loose in order to sustain a whole you know channel about it but totally. there's there's still a lot you don't have to be super it doesn't have to just become about dinosaurs like there's a lot to talk about with jurassic park so i'll try to contain myself today <laughs> hey yeah that sounds like a pretty good segue so uh if you clicked on the video or you downloaded the podcast you already know this but today we're going to be talking about the jurassic park world and trying to translate that into a theme park in in our fictional reality. So it's a, a fictional theme park that we're making a fictional theme park about. So yes. <laughs> this is what we're doing with our time. Um, but hey, that's what this show is, right? It's a, it's a complicated topic. Like, it's a, a tricky one because, like, like we said, it's based on a theme park, a fictional theme park, where things go horribly wrong. And we probably don't want that to happen again, in a, a deadly way at least. Um. <laughs> Let it also be said that Things went fine at Jurassic World for 10 years. Yeah. Like, Jurassic World happened 10 years after it opened, so the movie. Uh, so, like, I think some of the overblown hype about a dinosaur park, that's not actually what we're here to talk about, is, like, I wouldn't be afraid to go. I I'm, not, I'm not afraid to go to the zoo and, like... Wow. I don't know. You could probably hear the sirens. I'm more afraid of this neighborhood than I am <laughs> at a dinosaur park. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I get that. They evacuated the park. Yeah, like, of course. Successfully, and there was just certain people that they didn't get out. And it's right. also like the dinosaur that happened in 93. They started making the dinosaurs in the 80s. So since then, here's what's happened. A um Somebody sabotaged like and planned to just steal some embryos and just safely get them off the island no fuss no muss mm -hmm. and then um th uh the tropical storm hit and threw their plans off right so they were forced to like because the ship was taking off early they were forced to like rush and that's why they shut the fences down and that's why they were like being hasty because they were like i'm gonna go to jail if i don't <laughs> get these on that boat so uh that's what happened the first time and and these dinosaurs were like horribly 
probably horribly malnourished. The predator to prey like ratio is awful. Even after the park's been abandoned, it's a manufactured uh, biological population. It's not natural. And so a few people died in that incident. Mm -hmm. Most people got off safe and were like, that was horrible. And it was horrible because of the mismanagement. And yes, it, not to say that the warning of the technology is invalid, but then like five years later, some people went to the island, the second island that, uh, that had the dinosaurs on it purposefully went there and right. a few people died. Not even that many people died there. Yeah, and true. then the T-Rex went to San Diego. But again, mismanagement, like InGen brought the T-Rex to San Diego and then, uh, and then Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Park three. Some people went to the island knowing there were dinosaurs there. Should have <laughs> went there. Like it was illegal for them to go there. They tricked Alan Grant into going there. Yeah. Okay. That could have that could have happened in like the Madagascar. Like so that happened uh, happens all the time in the real world. Right. Um, totally. And then Jurassic World runs successfully for. Oh, the pterodactyls escaped at the end of Jurassic Park three. Killed right. some people in Canada. Yeah. So yes, it is a big deal. It has been a big deal, but not as catastrophic a deal. Then they opened it up with proper management and ran the park fine for 10 years. Yeah, totally true. Cool. So yeah, there's there's Sorry. a lot to this world. No, I, that's great. I was, it's good to get some background on it and kind of go over like the history that's already existed like for the park. Because yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's something we want to kind of like we can kind of pick and choose the parts we really like, I think, for this theme park. Um, sure. Yeah. So See, one of the... That's something fun because for me, I don't want to uh, take the mic from y'all all podcast, but what I would really love to do most is explore the world of the original Jurassic Park, walk around that raptor pen and see how you can go down the roads and how the T-Rex paddock you see in the movie connects to the Triceratops and get out and walk around and see a recreation that's unrealistic, and I'd be totally fine with them just making a Jurassic Park and playing loose with it. That's totally cool. Cool. That's awesome. And so that's one of the first things I think is is fundamental to the Jurassic Park existing is the dinosaurs. <laughs> like, in our reality, we haven't quite got there with the DNA technology that I know of. <laughs> so, I mean, how do we want to do that? Do we want to do uh, use technology in the form of, like, animatronics or use it kind of, like, screens or projections or augmented reality or do we just want to progress dna technology and actually make dinosaurs well this is a theoretical show we've got an unlimited budget you're right that's, i mean honestly <laughs> no. that's true <laughs> no no i think we should we gotta impose some limits or else it's just not fun and let's put it on the moon <laughs> but uh it's uh I think exactly what they did in the first movie, like a combination of those to trick you more into it. Like even if there's a something going on with the Spinosaurus, you can have moments where it's a animatronic that you see when you guys are like running behind the waterfall and it busts in at you or something. And then another moment when it comes out from behind the trees where it's a, I don't know, a projection or a, a augmented virtual reality and, I think yeah. that would be a, yeah, a great way to do it. And maybe there could be like optional, like augmented reality. So you don't have to wear the goggles, but it enhances it. So you can look up and see pterodactyls fly by. Oh, that's like... cool. That sounds super fun. Like, and I would totally want to be, go all in and see as many dinosaurs as possible. So yeah, maybe we could have like some kind of story reason for that, for like why they're wearing like this like specific like safety helmet or whatever that has goggles built into it um for those people who really want to nerd out and see all the dinosaurs they can see and then i don't know it, it is kind of a weird thing if like someone you're walking with can see an experience part of the theme park and the next person over can't see it because they don't have this technology equipped it's like kind of weird but i think that's sort of the way of the future in a way it's like you don't have to wear the goggles but if you want to then you get this extra thing so it's going to make kind of two different types of experiences, I think. Yeah, well, maybe there are certain parts. Okay, so I imagine we're, this is an adventure, right? Oh, of course. See, to me, what sort of it does hinge on, now it doesn't, if they made a Jurassic Park theme park, I'm in no matter what they right. do. <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> care. But what I, what I think would just be the 
the most amazing thing is you show up and maybe it's like a weekend or if it's not a weekend, it's a day and you have so many hours. I would say first day if it's a weekend, uh, first few hours if it's one day. The park is just fine, running smoothly. Everything's cool. You're going on the tour. You can walk around, look at what you want. At a certain point, you get in the cars and you go on the tour and there's some type of T-Rex car attack thing happens. I mean, they should do something like that. Yeah. And while you're distracted with that, people are out. Oh, yeah. Man, have the have it like one of those roller coaster things that moves the fake roller coaster. The 40 theater. Get in. Yeah. Yeah. And have the there be screens on the car windows and have you, you know, you're oh, distracted man. with this T-Rex attack in your car. And uh, maybe there's two cars and it's an interactive between the two of you and you can talk between them. Just oh, that's like, cool. And um, yeah, while you guys are in the car, unable to see what's going on in the park around you, all the employees and workers of the park are taking down sections of the fence and replacing them with torn oh, sections. Cool. Yeah, yeah, setting, setting up, up dinosaur things. animatronics, like setting up new attractions. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's great. I, and I think technologically, like a lot of that, That'd be a lot of work to do quickly, like, while people are on one attraction. But what you could do is, like, maybe there's, you know, the fence, and then there's, like, a shipping container as part of that fence for, like, storage, and then there's more fence over here. You could just have that kind of on wheels, and the shipping container moves, and that part of the fence is damaged. So it can kind of, like, convert between everything's fine and everything's messed up. Like, just kind of with a flip of a switch. That kind of stuff. But I love that. The whole, like, huge transformation happening at once. That's super cool. And if we want to kind of... um, explain why it happened you know in the like extended universe like you said they keep adding more people like oh yeah this guy was there too oh yeah this guy was there too and this is one of the reasons why the park you know fell apart so we could have multiple um kind of interactive story type of things you know like um depending on what attraction you're taking or what part of the park you're in it could kind of explain why the park lost power or whatever happened to cause the catastrophe there's multiple explanations for it at the same time so it's kind of like, oh, yeah, remember we were in this spot and we saw this guy, uh, you know, disable the power. And, like, that's the, why it happened. And then someone else in a different part of the park had a totally different experience where it's like, oh, yeah, remember that dinosaur jumped over the fence and landed on the whatever and it broke the thing. So, like, there's multiple explanations at once so that everyone was kind of firsthand observing everything going down at the same time. So they can, I don't know, there's multiple true stories at the same time. I think that's cool. And instead of just saying, you know, these eight people were there when it happened, it could be, most people were there at one of these sites when it when it all went down at the same exact moment. So they all have their own like explanation about what happened. And that's complicated, that's cool. but I think it's it's hard to get everyone in the park distracted at the same time on the same attraction. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But, you but are you right could, about that. You could definitely do that though, where it's like make sure everyone is in line for something or everyone's like out of this area and then we'll transform it. You could totally yeah, do that. I, I, I guess I was going into this thinking that it was like a group of friends renting the island for a weekend. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck in the first movie thinking about um, the, really uh, small group. the small group of people that's been invited to be like, play test the island. Excuse me, what are they doing? Um, they're not play testing yet. <laughs> Something like that. I mean... A, a safety evaluation. Yeah. And we could set up the story in that way. Um and just have each group is kind of sent to a different part of the island because they're basically different groups that don't know about the other groups being there. So it feels like a much more intimate experience. It's like, you know, maybe there's 50 people there, but it's like, oh, it's just us 50 for this initial testing. And then elsewhere on the island, there are many other groups of 50 people who feel the same same way. Maybe you, when you enter the park, there is a... there You get to decide what, like what group you're going with cool. and each group is sort of like a different story for like how they got to the island and what like the thing is so if you go with this one group you're like okay and there's only so many people allowed in each group or whatever so you're like okay here's um this is the group that is being invited to the island before it's ever been opened to evaluate the islands for safety and all that and then it breaks down part way through and blah 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 yeah you got another group where it's like the park already broke down a few years ago we're sending you to the island Ah. whatever whatever and one half of the park is already torn apart 
And that's where they enter from. And they're not really allowed to progress because of whatever to the other half until it's been torn down. That's and then okay. those people aren't allowed to progress to the other oh, half man. until. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. And you could kind of base it in groups. You know, the first hundred people that get there, here's like your two story options. We'll send them in because the whole park is in pristine condition in the morning. And then if you get there later in the day, you know, you have to go with this route over here where it's like you're the cleanup crew or you're trying to, you know, rescue a few people who are stranded on the island. Or, you know, we could have all kinds of story reasons for why it, you would go oh, back. Oh, yeah. Just a daily every day. That's every the day. Goes, yeah. Yeah. I, who's, my job is I take down, I let the T-Rex out every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I really like that. And then, you know, you could have other, other groups there in the morning. Like there could be, you know, you're a new hire um, working in the like biology department or the, you know, you're kind of helping you're in charge of the dinosaurs or you're in charge of, you know, the electronics, like you're setting up more electrical fences or whatever. There's all kinds of, of reasons and story you could add to that. Um, yeah. Because I think everyone who goes to the island is there to kind of observe it and just kind of walk around. That's the only real thing we need to make them do is get to the island and walk around. And then from there, no matter what your role is or how old you are, or what demographic or whatever, when the dinosaur breaks out of the fence, like we're going to all have similar reactions, I think. And that's one of the things that brings us all together are huge, you know, unnatural disasters like this. Yeah, right. Right. So I think this is really exciting so far. Um, and I'm wondering, do we want to have like a, a dome over the island? Like so we can have a artificial sky and so you can't see out to the parking lot? Or is that something we're not going to worry about? Like making the, the island feel like an island? Hmm. Or should we just say we're we're on the central part of the island and there's a but dense trees around the edge? Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. I don't think you'd have to worry about that. Totally. And if you know you're one of those people who's just in love with dinosaurs and you're gonna go put on the AR goggles and all that stuff, like you've already like bought into the illusion. Like you're not trying to look for the seams and try to like oh well, this isn't very realistic. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think that's something we really need to worry about. You're right. And. You can just headcanon it if you do. It's it's like in uh, Jurassic Park 3. Like, you stumble upon the parking lot. You go, a parking lot? That wasn't on InGen's list. What are <laughs> they doing here? <laughs> That's kind of interesting. And, and maybe that could be, uh, if there's, you know, one of those kind of collectible type things that we've been doing pretty much since the Gotham episode that you and Craig were on. Um, kind of collectible items within the park or like little mysteries you're trying to solve. You could have that, you know, if you're if you're on the um, electrician team in the story, you might be looking to like complete a list of whatever, you know, these certain kind of breaker boxes or whatever, and find them throughout the park. Maybe that's one of the things you're trying to audit. Uh, you're on the auditing team and you're like trying to figure out where they spent all their money, and they're like, and you find like some kind of weird building that doesn't really make sense. That could be something that they explain away in the story, or like you said with the parking lot. You could explain that. And they're like, wait, why is there a parking lot on this island? There's How would someone drive here? And like, it's this whole other like little mystery that you have to try to figure out. Do we want to get into what happens once things go crazy and the dinosaurs are loose? Or do we want to like work on some earlier attractions for earlier in the day? Well, I think, well, I love that idea of it. Yeah, it's a daily thing. I think that's a great thing. And you can go whatever time you want. If you want to go the whole day, you get to experience the whole spectrum and if you and but there's still plenty of cool things to do there should still be early in the day opportunities for action ex and excitement and, and peril you know so like maybe you have to you can be part of the team that goes in to feed the t-rex or something i don't know or like pull its tooth because it's sick i don't know that's and pretty it, cool yeah. and th that could be really convincing with with animatronics you know especially if it's it's like in a veterinary area, so it's kind of already like strapped down. So it's not going to move totally realistically anyway, because a real dinosaur in that situation wouldn't be able to move much, just it's like head and tail. And so yeah. you could do that with animatronics. That'd be really cool. And oh, here's, well, I had an idea that actually would uh, work well into that. And that was that like, if you go to the visitor center, no matter what time of day it is, there's like a hub for virtual reality games there which you're so like if you go there in the morning it could be like all right we've got to go in uh 
a gallimimus jumped the fence again it's in the t-rex paddock you gotta go get it before it gets eaten so like i don't know you and a group of people put on the things and you're going on this and it's like you leave the visitor's center in the verge you're really just in that room right you know and you leave the visitor's center you go do this oh that's thing. cool you know you're on the treadmill or whatever and, yeah and then you come back at the end of the mission and uh, there could be an opportunity to run away from dinosaurs or like so in that sense, maybe if you're like, oh, the T-Rex, we need to pull its tooth. I actually, I don't know why I like that. <laughs> I do too. Um, that's cute. And that's something that they would actually have to do on that island. Because right. yeah, you so, know, carnivores' teeth get messed up. Like that's going to impact their survival rates. Yeah. Maybe there's a, a virtual reality game there where you're, you've got to go out and trank the T-Rex first. And then once you get it tranked, you can take the virtual reality off and you go in and you now you've got to get the tooth out without waking it up or whatever and that's the and there's a big animatronic and yeah wow I think so I, cool. i'm thinking this is this might be a very natural way to make this all kind of fit um most of the island could be real animatronics you know physical actual dinosaurs i mean they're they're robots but you know they look like real dinosaurs you don't have to wear your ar goggles around the park but then you know you find uh this shed over here and you're gonna go get into one of the little like jeep type vehicles and drive around and go look for whatever kind of dinosaur um when you go yeah, in and you sit in that vehicle it, it turns into an ar kind of basically a video game like you step into this this jeep and it's not a real jeep it's basically just a really big high-end video game yeah i love that and you could even when the park's open you could go to or when it's not even you're at the uh, hadrosaur paddock or something the duck bills and i don't know why it could be any dinosaur paddock that's what i'm picturing and uh You've got those, like, what do you call it? Like a viewfinder, like you see in, like, San Diego and stuff where you look, you pay a quarter and you can look through at the big metal things. And yeah. you can look into the 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 cage or the pen, uh, I'm sorry, paddock, and see the duckbills running around. Like, if you're looking, you're like, oh, I can't see them. It's like, oh, because you're, you're too far. It's too misty or Dude, something. You know? That is incredible. <laughs> that is such a yeah. good, like, business idea, you know, like – if your your boardwalk already has those little things, add one more that's like, watch Godzilla attack your city. And then, like, you look through the thing, and it's just AR. Like, <laughs> it's like Pokemon oh, man. Go technology. And it's like, you're just looking out at the ocean anyway, so here comes Godzilla marching around. That's, yeah. dude, that's pretty sweet. I love that idea. And like you said, with it could just be misty, or, like, there could be too much tree cover where you're not going to be able to see anything. But then when you look through the AR little view thingy, the trees are less dense or the fog is, is not there as densely. So you can yeah. see through it. We totally. could also have, it's um, under the guise that it says you're like, it, it's binoculars. It helps you see farther, but it's adding the dinosaurs. That's oh, really cool. We could also just say, Hey, it's foggy today. Sorry about that. But if you look through these, you know, they've got a special technology, the blah, 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 explain it away with a little techno babble. Um, well, it's, it's lost in the, in the films, but in the book, uh, the reason the island's called Isla Nublar, that means Cloud Island, and it's called that because the island is actively volcano in the first, uh, an active volcano, and uh, it, there's geysers all over the island that are like constantly erupting steam, and that's one of the reasons the when the park guests are looking out the windows that they can't see any dinosaurs and they're getting frustrated. They're like, all I see is fog and leaves. Like, this is crap. <laughs> wow. So that yeah. that adds a lot to the story, but then that also makes me question why that island? <laughs> why not pick one that's not an active volcano? <laughs> right. You know, if they put Disneyland on uh, an active volcano, people would probably not go there as frequently. <laughs> well, they use the geothermal uh, energy. It's one of the reasons they were able to run the park on such few people. So the idea was it was a mistake, more so, though, because they were relying on the technology rather than people. But, Interesting. Uh, they uh but the i don't know i mean for cost for one <laughs> i guess yeah uh and atmosphere ambiance it does um, look pretty cool legal the legal uh, -huh. uh questioning questions and stuff but yellowstone national parks on a volcano True. Like, that's people go that could literally erupt while we're having this conversation nobody knows like it could be a hundred years hundred thousand tomorrow like no one knows and a ton of people would die that's crazy yeah and that really adds to the the really like scary atmosphere of the book you've got yeah. this island just 
thick, thick fog, you can barely see 20 feet in front of you in some of the areas of the island, and there's raptors on the loose. It's it's really cool uh, it's in contrast to the movie, uh-huh. which is more of a awesome adventure, you know? Right, true. Yeah, that totally could have changed the, the movie. And, you know, maybe they did try to make realistic-looking, you know, kind of foggy backgrounds, but it just kind of looked like a you know, fog machine. And they're like, well, this looks dumb. Let's kind of change it a little <laughs> bit to make it more, you know, we're going to see everything. So, yeah, that's interesting. Adding that back in would be really cool. I like that. And we could use that same kind of technology with the AR goggles. You know, it's like, here are your, not night vision goggles, but something like that, where it aids, you know, the naked eye can't see through this stuff, but this, these goggles can. So if you want to see, you know, deeper into the island, you have to wear these things and you'll be able to see that far. That's kind of cool. That's neat. Yeah, and, then, and if you go at night, for example, to the visitor center, it's like, the raptors are out. We've got to, just like in the book and movie, you got to get to the maintenance shed. So, like, you put those on and you go out, and that way you have an adventure where the raptors are actually, like, you know, after you, which would be impossible to do with the animatronics, you know. Wow. That's really interesting. I, that, that already is, like, selling me on this park. That sounds super cool. Huh. It's already cooler than I imagined. It's already <laughs> cool with my imagination. Right. Right? And being being like like you are, you know, such a fan of this series for so long and so intensely, like you guys have gone back through like a lot of the extended universe kind of stuff. You just did a couple podcasts on the comic book series, which like I had never even heard about before. And I'm, I would consider myself a fan of the series and I've read the, the novels, but the comic books, like there's, there's just so much to this world. And then like getting to do a theme park based on it eventually, like that's got to be pretty cool for you. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the uh, expanded universe is campy, and you know you got to be a super fan to love it because <laughs> it's not very good most of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Jura- Jurassic Park: The Game by Telltale Games. Have you ever played that? No, I haven't. Well, it's an awful game. Oh, really? It is absolute garbage uh, as far as games are concerned. Dang. And I'm I'm not just hating on like that style of game. You know, they their Walking Dead game was a lot of fun. The fables one like i think those are all very well made games you just you know if you're expecting an action game don't buy that game but jurassic park just isn't a fit huh. for that but as a fan the story is probably like the best attempt at a uh, jurassic park ex- expanded universe and uh i just i watched it on youtube and it's oh it's it's so cool the the way they serve as fans of the book and the movie, and uh, there's actually a lot that you could draw from in uh, this theme park. They had a roller coaster in there. They revealed that there was a roller coaster under construction, and the people actually have to use it sort of at, to get away from something. Oh, at one point. cool! So, yeah, that's we, that's really neat. I like the idea because like doing an amusement park with no coasters and no real attractions is kind of weird. Um, but, yeah. but I love that being able to add it in and be like, well, they're, you know, this is Jurassic Park. They would have these attractions here. Cause it's basically a next generation, like super science-y theme park. Like that is <laughs> awesome. Sorry, I'm, I'm imagining Grant, Tim and Lex on their trek through the jungle in 93, trying to get back to the visitor's <laughs> center. And, uh, and they, they, they come across something and you see Grant, like his, his jaw drop open and he's craning his head up. And he's like, oh, my God. And they're like, they look, and it cuts, and it's a Ferris wheel. <laughs> and, and they're like, this, must, this means we're close. The map says that. And he's like, they're like, we're almost there. we got to keep going. And he's like, wait, Lex, we have to ride the Ferris <laughs> wheel. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, I do think they could have added, like, putting that in the movies could have been really interesting if, like, they don't know that that's there. And they're kind of, you know, going through the jungle at night trying to get their way back to safety. And then somehow the power turns on and, like, you know, all the lights of all the attractions turn on. Like, that'd be a really interesting thing. And, like, the sounds start to attract the dinosaurs to that area. I'm getting a little, like, a zombie land vibe from it. But that could be really cool, having uh, dinosaurs in a theme park, like a regular theme park. Or amusement park, I guess is technically what you'd call that. But that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And that again, like you, could, for one, you could wear the goggles when you get on the roller coaster. Yeah. And they could also incorporate 
animatronics into it. So there's maybe one part where the T-Rex is there and it turns its head to bite you and that's that's an animatronic that just needs to sit there and do that. And then there's raptors on... The, maybe there's other tracks that aren't actually tracks you go on. They just appear like it's a track you're going to end up or you already went on and right. there's a raptor on that. Oh, like, right. That's great. And you could say, you know, like... Um, I don't know in the story of the park how you want to do it, but like you could have that part open to guests. Like you guys are more than welcome to ride this, but we recommend wearing these goggles so you can keep an eye out for for any kind of threats or whatever. <clears throat> because you know we had some issues yesterday. You know there might still be a few whatever in the park. Because um, this it is kind of weird. Hey, People... I was here yesterday. <laughs> He's totally downplaying that. I mean, you would start to do that after a while working here. You'd be like, you, you know, I mean, I, I think it's pretty safe at this point. And you, like, keep checking your watch. Like, I'm pretty sure it's okay. I don't think there's going to be any dinosaurs. And then the alarm goes off. And like, well, there you go. Now they're out. So, yeah, this, this episode's coming together super quickly. Like, normally it takes a while to kind of figure out what's so great about the, the property that we're going to be making a theme park about, um, at least from my perspective. So this one just kind of fell into place. Like, the big overall story arc and the transformation of the park going through every day i think that's really cool yeah, um, me too. and it's kind of interesting also we could kind of you know the, you start out with the park in good condition things go crazy um maybe then you have some attractions about wrangling and kind of restoring the park and trying to get everyone safe and surviving the storm and all that kind of stuff and then maybe by the end of the day things are looking kind of okay like it's going to be all right and so if you come back the next day again, you're like, oh, hey, look, everything's everything's fine again. It's kind of interesting. So it, it wouldn't necessarily break your immersion if you go there two days in a row, even though the same cycle of events happens. It's like it starts with everything fine, and it ends up with everything mostly fine. And so then the next day you come back, you might be a little bit more paranoid in the morning. You're like, well, everything seems fine, but I know for sure there were at least five more dinosaurs loose on the island when we went when we went to bed last night so <laughs> it's kind of cool it gives you like a little survival uh instinct i think on your your second day there it's like wait does this is this what it was like yesterday like you'd be a little bit more paranoid i think that'd be kind of cool yeah and adding some um something you know some elements for those return guests who have already kind of been through this before adding more little levels of details or more um, parts of the story that they can unfold would be really cool like, if you can complete your checklist um, that you've been working on all day, finding all those whatever, um, it'd be cool to, you know, have, like, a, basically an interactive story that you can play over a few days where you can really get to the bottom of, of whoever is causing the issues here, like, solving the case a little bit, I think would be really rewarding if you're going to go there multiple days in a row. I mean, maybe there should be a unified story that all the different things contribute to so you can discover different clues and whatnot you know yeah. across the park i like that that's good yeah so even if you're part of group a that enters when the park's already when the disaster happened a few years ago and the park's been vacant of people, people for a few years, years. Mm -hmm. the, you could still be uncovering a conspiracy of something that occurred in the initial disaster and the other people yeah. are watching it happen right then and there and, that's yeah. great you can like uncover some some clues and like kind of put together the some evidence about what happened that's very interesting huh cool and yeah, yeah. I, I think for the most part the 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 state of the island could kind of represent almost any point in time after 1993 um so we can kind of play around with like what point in time the current story is set without having true, to radically true. change everything. Yeah, you know? totally. And really the only thing that, that are, uh, would change a lot is, well, the status of the fences and things. But really it's the humans that drive the plot. You know, the dinosaurs are part of nature. Oh, well, almost. You know, they're, they're man-made technically. But, but I think that they're kind of acting as you know, the man versus nature thing. Like, nature's not going to change if you go away for five years and come back. It'll be basically the same. I think that the core part of the park, the foundation, is relatively flexible with the storytelling. Like, you basically, which movie do you want to kind of base this uh, this adventure on or, or whatever like that. So where do we go from here? What else would you like to to make sure we cover in this theme park? Well, there's the there's the different groups, I guess. You got group A goes in... They're evaluating the park before it's been opened. Group B goes in. They're 
Uh, and these are both going into basically the same section of the park, just with slightly different beginning points and, uh, you know, guide that, uh, you know, like first few steps. And they're going in and it's like, yeah, the park, the disaster happened 10 years ago. The park's open now. Enjoy the park as a guest. Uh, and that group would be bigger. You know what I mean? And then group C, we're sending you to research the dinosaurs or something like that like in the lost world group three you're on a rescue mission you know like in uh, the third jurassic park or maybe you're going there to study or um, i just said that maybe you're going there to steal the dinosaurs or something, something like, like that. that that's cool i just had an idea too if we want to we could kind of set up the the layout of the park could almost be chronological which sounds crazy but you know, you've got an area of the park that's kind of in, in pristine condition, and then maybe the next little chunk, like, things are a little bit crazier, or then the next park after that next part is, like, three years later, which sounds a little bit weird, but... Yeah, that, I think that combined with, I still do like the idea of put them in the VR car and have people rearrange, but that's just for the first chunk and so that they they won't be allowed to progress because otherwise they can't rearrange the whole park when they're in that car but have enough people and have it a small enough area big enough that it'll give them different things to walk around and do while the park is still open but small enough that they can tear it apart while the people are distracted with each group in their own different yeah. missions or whatever that's cool and then that allows you to have you know kind of your uh, visitor center that's always in fine condition and you could even have like the jurassic world area that's always in fine condition and it's like during those 10 <gasps> years of peace you know we don't want to have dinosaurs attacking during this part the visitor section their center has uh exits to the different so, sections yeah. of the park but in order to get in you need a, a security clearance card to use the door so like if you're from group a they're not going to let you through group uh door b and then at a certain point in the story the door will just be open that is you know? great yeah Oh, that's yeah. super cool. Wow. Yeah, that, that works completely. I love that. You could also have it so that um, if you needed to, like, if we want to make it feel like an intimate experience, right? You could have it so when you first enter the park, no one else is going to be coming in there except for you, your group of, like, ten people that you're kind of sectioned with. No one's going to be through there for half an hour. So for 30 minutes, you can choose, do you want to do this attraction? Do you want to go hang out in this area? Or do you want to go to this attraction? And then 30 minutes later, it'll say, you know, like, this next gate will open and your tour guide will be like, all right, we'll keep moving with the tour this way. And so then they all go, the door closes, and then the next group comes in. And it gets to have that same intimate experience where it doesn't feel like a full theme park full of thousands of people. It's like, we're 10 people exploring this island. We're the only ones here. <laughs> right that's interesting and then if you want to be really like kind of crazy about it like the the people who are trying to figure out like all the clues the mysteries of the island like why is there a parking lot here you could eventually uncover this whole thing is just a simulation of jurassic park <laughs> none of these dinosaurs are real oh my gosh i don't know what else we really could add to the to this theme park i'm, I'm honestly feeling the same way i mean other than just milking specific things like oh yeah you gotta see the spitter you gotta you know but yeah i think that it would be cool um especially for those dinosaur lovers in the early morning kinds of attractions to just see them in their natural habitat and yeah they're fake and everything but we could try to replicate you know or simulate what it would actually be like as much as possible and i think doing that through animatronics and through those little viewfinder things we were talking about that could be totally fascinating like you could even take a like biology class through here and it's it's fake they're dinosaurs but you could still learn something we can still base it in reality 
as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. There would be little signs like at zoos and stuff. Like, did you did you know Metrocanthosaurus was the you know like yeah. that's that's that'd be great. And then you could use those clues to like know about like how to get through a certain you know puzzle or game or attraction. And... Oh man, that's actually really cool. Making it. Um... <laughs> oh my god! And if you have a dinosaur expert in your group, yeah, because you guys don't know each other, you all don't right? know each other, and you could be like, "Hey, who knows dinosaurs? I just like movies," you know, right. and like, yeah, like, I think that's super cool. cool. It's like you're going through there, and it's like it just feels like you're in a museum in the morning. It's like, yeah, this is like nice and peaceful. We're learning a little bit. We're getting to see these things in in action, and then maybe you know, five hours later, there's one of those same dinosaurs out of the fence, like coming at you. And then you're like, wait, is this thing a herb? Is this thing an herbivore? Like, should I be scared? And like, you're like looking at your son for like, what do we do? I don't know. Is this thing gonna eat us or not? It's like, it's kind of interesting to like, to have like a sudden pop quiz of like, do you remember that kind of information you read earlier? Is this animal a threat to you or not? Kind but of that would be the cool thing too of like, if you're or if you're trying to figure something out, like if you were in a group of people on the island for real. And it's like one of you was a paleontologist. You'd be like, all right, ask the paleontologist, you know, just right. like in uh, The Lost World when they're wrangling the dinos and they got the one paleontologist. He's like, no, no, Pachycephalosaurus is a herbivore, you know, and like, yeah. you'd be like, all right, well, Andrew's the one who actually knows dinosaurs. So right. what, do you know anything about the Dilophosaurus? And like, I don't know, you know, that'd be cool. I like that a lot. And then like, you know, maybe you could figure out like, you know, if there's some kind of information like the, you know, the females of the species look like this, and then you realize, like, oh, this one's a, a, a mother, like, I bet we're just in the between her and, like, her eggs or something, and then you look around and you figure out, like, that's the, the way of solving the puzzle and not getting eaten, is to realize, like, oh, we just need to move away from this nest and we'll be fine. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of right. cool, like, keeping a cool head and, like, remembering the facts that you know. That's really cool. And I also like the idea of, of rewarding different types of brains, you know, if someone's really good at kind of survival skills that might come in handy during one of the attractions where you're just trying to kind of escape from this creature and not get found. Um, I don't know. It's, it's cool to reward those kinds of instincts, like different types of brains. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I know you're not going to sustain an amusement park off this. The park is, or the, yeah, the actual park isn't made to just please Jurassic Park fanatics, uh -huh. but my favorite thing about the Jurassic Park f franchise is sort of just kind of uh, astrally projecting myself to the island uh, in between movies mm -hmm. when no one's there. Wow. And just watching the dinosaurs, like, live their life in this, like, half abandoned, well, a completely abandoned, like, overgrown uh, jungle. It, like, it's it's a garden. It's a balance of nature and, and uh, man-made design and like it's um it's to, to think about like those quiet moments you know what i mean you're on yeah. the island and there's oh suddenly that jet generator is still going or something and that's right. the only thing you hear and this is the hum of that and like oh you hear some birds and it's a pterodactyls flying overhead and that's like, really cool I could just imagine being able to wander and just mm -hmm. have those goggles on, like the optional ones, and, and yeah. be like, I just want to sit down on this hill for a minute and like eat my lunch and just chill and watch the dinosaurs down there in that field. Like, yeah. I don't even, I'm cool with that and hang right. out and talk about Pokemon while we watch dinosaurs. Right. I, I just as a place to like hang out and if there were like a few apartments in this theme park i'd be like yes i would totally live there that'd be awesome <laughs> right. um, but i like that idea maybe the way that our island is sectioned there's a park that's kind of always in in peaceful mode you know like that's kind of the whole thing of jurassic park like the whole thrill is like that it's peaceful and exciting and then like at like the drop of a hat things go a little bit crazy yeah, and you but have you to can survive. still hear the roars, and yeah, that's but, it. like that interrupts the silence. You just right. hear this like the hum of dragonflies and the gentle honking of the Parasaurolophus, and then you hear like a distant roar. Yeah. You know, and Parasaurolophus all stand at attention, looking around nervously, and start honking, agitated, and like I just, that's really cool. And maybe you could do that. Like uh, I don't know if we want to go down this route, but you could do a thing where you sort of like pick your your, your career or whatever in the story. You know, if you're a paleontologist, then uh, 
that that's one thing. So if your whole group is paleontologists, then the doors that will open to you are mostly kind of peaceful, research-based kinds of things. Um, whereas if you're like, you want to be the security guard and you have like the tranquilizer gun, then there could be more attractions open to you that are like kind of like shooting gallery sort of things. Like, you know, you're on a raft going down the river and you need to shoot the threats. Um, yeah. So you can kind of have different and like roles people might want to do because people want different things out of theme parks, you know? If and it's then a bunch the idea... of grandpas, they don't want to necessarily... <laughs> uh, I mean, they probably a few of them do want to be the security guards getting to shoot stuff, but not yeah. all of them, right? You should be able to choose your and, own class a little. But then the idea is that like once the park's broken down... Um, aside from the things if that'll be exclusive to morning and and night, you know, uh, once the park's broken down, you can pretty much sample and experience any of them. So I guess if you if you chose to be a security guard, then you can't end up going back and doing the, the um, story of the park breaking down. But you could still go do the T Rex car attack. Like oh, you yeah. can still get in the car and pay for it and experience the attack you know and then you could uh you could still once the park's broken down go to the visitor center to the virtual reality hub and play the game where you have to go into the raptor pen and like there's no limits to you experimenting with what the other people did yeah. you know yeah. in their story that's really cool i like that a lot uh this is super cool i think adding um as many like sciencey things as possible like you know re real details about how dna works and like kind of updating the science from the movies to, to more modern standards would be really cool and making it, not so that it's like an educational thing, not quite like a children's museum, but like a place where it's really fun and there's like some actual good things that you can be like in your biology yeah. class. You can be like, oh yeah, I went to Jurassic World and like, and like that's kind of, it wouldn't be a dorky thing. You'd be like, well yeah, this is like actually where they're applying these kinds of things in a theme park. I mean, it's fake. It's they fun, would. Right? But, there's but they would. Stuff. Yeah. It also doesn't pull you out of the immersion. It's right. not like it would be so cheeseball if you're like, yeah, I went to Gotham City and they, they were ta teaching me about bats the whole time <laughs> and the infrastructure of city road working. And like, <laughs> I, went, I went to the Pokemon place and they're just trying to teach me about animals the whole experience. Right. I don't want to learn about animals. <laughs> like, yeah, I get that. That's the bit. It's very Jurassic Park, Park though, yeah. You would have, like, you would, absolutely. Totally. I like that. I, I think it is kind of a mix of, like, science with survival and man versus nature. Like, that's kind of the nature of the of that series. And representing that well in the theme park would be, would be awesome. And I also think a big part of it is kind of um, changing from being comfortable to being scared and then being comfortable again. And that Which, kind of yeah. roller coaster. Yeah. Actually, that brings me to a wonderful question, which is how are we going to integrate uh, the concept of insecurity towards fatherhood into <laughs> this park, the, the central running theme? That Jurassic is what it's all about. Park. That's why we all love Jurassic Park and Jurassic World so much. <laughs> well, that's what the the movies are, are about. Well, the movies are about parenthood. The first one is about uh, Alan Grant. Right. That's that's really what the movie's about. Yeah, but him getting to realize yeah. that kids are okay, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's a yeah. story about that framed in a warning about genetic uh, technology, technology yeah. framed in a story about a dinosaur park. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's what we want <laughs> people to be thinking about on their ride home, is uh, <laughs> really appreciating children. <laughs> <laughs> Look out the window, the pelicans fly by. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Dude, I think this theme park, I mean, I think it's all set. Like, of course we need to go into more like specific details before we're ready to actually open, but I think we got the blueprints pretty much laid out in a, a smooth yeah. manner that works. That'd I think cool. that uh, doing some, some areas like the kitchen scene, like some uh, kind of stealth segments like that's something i've never seen in a theme park before i've never even designed in a theme park before like oh and that would be hide. perfect yeah make perfect as with the as possible augmented reality oh, but you, yeah. it's you put on a specific pair of goggles or oh. something for that room and you go through because and then you're just looking around the counters up above the counters so it's just got to have the rafters like stalking you and yeah. then 
You know, if they run at you, if you get caught, it's game over. Your screen goes black. That's pretty You cool. know, something like that. Yeah. I uh, Early on when I was thinking about this, I had this weird idea where, like, well, what if what if you die? Like, in the story, your character just got eaten because you made a wrong decision or whatever in this interactive area. And so your character is dead. I had this idea, I, well, what if you could okay. have an, uh, another area of the park that's kind of, it's not something that's usually open to anyone who wants to go to it. But it's an area where it's like, well, um, you know, you didn't survive the simulation or whatever. So you get to kind of see behind the scenes a little bit. And this is a little bit of a weird idea. We could also just have this as one of the those VR games or something like that. But an area where you could kind of control the dinosaurs would be really cool. That would um, be cool. Yeah, I don't know exactly I mean... how that would work. But having some kind of computer console where it's like, here's all of our digital simulations of these dinosaurs that people can see in their AR goggles. And you can kind That'd of like be, control I th- one. I think that would be a great um, maybe just section to the visitor center. The way I would honestly approach it is it's that's that's one of those things where we'd be like, it's just a theme park, dude. Yeah. Like to the guy who's like, this doesn't make sense. I thought it's been three years since the disaster <laughs> and everyone in your stupid group just keeps bringing up this morning. Yeah. And you, you look at that guy and you're like, dude, it's just a theme park. Stop right. ruining our fun. Right. Like, and then he's like, yeah, well, Andrew died. <laughs> okay. If you don't want to play with Andrew, you can leave. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. And uh, I, I don't think there are that many but, people around. That like, said, yeah. if you don't like that, you could just like, you know, you take off your thing and then like you have this whole, you have to like walk through these doors, you come out and, and you're greeted by like John Hammond or whatever. And he's like, oh, I hate to tell you this, but you died. You were killed by a velociraptor. Lucky for you, my lad, you're on an island where we clone things. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. If you die, you get cloned. And then that's so funny. Wow. <laughs> and that could be um, one of those, like, if you're trying to do that big, like, meta mystery kind of solving thing, and you get to an area where there's, like, suddenly there's thousands of people here, and I thought I was in a group of eight. It's like, well, these are clones. You know, we're, we're testing out the human clone <laughs> technology, and we're letting them run around this little Jurassic World area to see how they do. <laughs> That's really great. Well, Nathan K., this was another excellent adventure. I love doing podcasts with you, man. Um, for the listener, if you liked what you just heard, definitely check out Nathan's shows uh, and then also your YouTube channel right the last word Jurassic Park the last word yeah. Jurassic Park and if I mean the easy thing is just remember secret room multimedia.com that's yeah. not an easy thing to remember it's easy <laughs> I mean I've, I've yeah it's, it's definitely something that like you hear on every podcast like you start to memorize yeah. it for sure secret room multimedia. secret room it's easy multimedia yeah. and i've been working more on the site it's been a really slow build i it actually did good. some more work on it yesterday uh oh. when we're recording this but it's uh you can find everything there i've got a pokemon podcast i've got an all-purpose podcast i've got a new album coming out september 1st i don't nice. know when this is dropping but it's uh i've got two or three albums already up there Lots of stuff, lots of free stuff. Um, there's comics, and yeah, you'll find a link to the last word Jurassic Park, and yeah, yeah. This yeah. episode's coming out August 27th, so just in a few days, your new album will be out. That's pretty sweet, man. Perfect, that's awesome. awesome. Well, yeah, I'm sure then you will see a like uh, big banner right at the top of the website <laughs> that, that's awesome. advertising it. It's called Play, and the website looks awesome. So, yeah, listener, go. Check out his stuff. Nathan Kay's got a lot of uh, a lot on his resume already. It's pretty great. Thank awesome. you so much. Sure. Thanks Thank for being on the show, man. I think this is an awesome, awesome theme park. I'm pretty stoked about it. I, I it turned out super well and super fast. So, boom.